Now, every testimony we hear is the seed for someone else's breakthrough. Because I, am, I know that there are women here that are struggling with similar things. But I want you to be encouraged that God sees you. You know, and tonight he sends you us to give you a hand and pull you out from your dark spot, from your darkness. Your job is to respond and not to shy away and say, no, God, this is too much. This is not, this is your night. And tonight God is handing you his hand and saying you get up. Amen. Come on, let's give a hand of applause. Um. Wow, beautiful women. <laughs> I am so excited tonight <laughs> and scared <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> excited and scared. Are you excited to be here? <laughs> Come on, give me some woman power. <laughs> that is so awesome. I am so happy to see all of your beautiful faces here. We have some good stuff in store for you. And I believe that you're going to be blessed tonight. And the Holy Spirit will touch you, touch your soul, deliver you tonight. Amen. And I also would like to welcome every single person who's watching us on YouTube right now. I believe that distance is not a barrier. And you can receive what, why you're tuning in. The reason. Every, every person has that reason why. And I believe God is ready to answer that for you in Jesus name. I encourage you to uh, share this broadcast, spam the chat, <laughs> put your image emojis in the chat, comment, and yeah, we're gonna go from there. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, now the Bible says that give honor to whom honor is due. So first of all, I would like to give honor to Pastor Luba. Uh, our senior pastor's wife. Could you please stand up? Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you so much. We honor you. You are the mother of this house. We love you so, so much. You deserve honor. Thank you. Thank you. And another woman that I would like to honor tonight is actually my mom. She came from uh, Vancouver, Washington. They drove to visit us, and it's her birthday today. And would you please stand up? Mamuля, встань, пожалуйста. And we prepared a small gift for my mommy. <laughs> Mom, I love you. I love you, and I honor you. Those flowers are for you. I know you like light pink color. <laughs> I love you, Mom. Happy birthday. Amen. Day to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear mama, happy birthday to you. Woo! Thank you for helping me honor my mom and um, again, welcome every single woman if you're a guest from outside of town you're welcome so tonight i will be sharing the word of god with you and my message is called delivered for a purpose so i will be um sharing my testimony with you many of you probably heard it online or i've already shared it in some places but if you have not heard it here we go <laughs> so let me start with the with the scripture first if you have Bibles, let's go to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. And the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. I want you to put a mark there. We're going to come back to that scripture in a little bit. I was born in Moscow, Russia, and um, my parents, they were pastors. I, I'm a PK, <laughs> raised and born on a church pew, yes, but I did not know the Lord. You know, um, life in Russia is a little bit different than here. I immigrated to the United States with my family as a refugee when I was 19 years of age. And so I was growing up as a... Um, um, pastor's kid but in Russia it's a little different if you are Christian 
like Protestant Christian, it considers to be very weird, something that does not belong. And the society automatically rejects you. And so I was growing up in school. I did not have friends. I was always seeking for that acceptance from teachers, from uh, my classmates. And I could not ever get it. And since we had, I'm from such a big city, and we had a small church, and uh, we only, you know, went to the church like once on Sunday, and you had to drive to the church like an hour and a half in a car or an hour. So it was very difficult, and I didn't really have any Christian friends. So I was pretty much growing up by myself and craving that connection. And when I was in high school, it got so dark for me that I started to uh, look for friends and completely become not who I was. I was craving that and I connected myself to some uh, friends that weren't doing good. They're good guys. They did what unchristian people do. I can't blame them for, for that. But I wasn't born again. I did not know the Lord. And so I was growing up like that, feeling rejected from the society, from friends. Couldn't find connection, you know, like Mariana shared. There's a lot of, Victoria shared that there's a lot of rejection that devil is using, you know, to pull us away from God. And that's what happened to me. Rejection from the society. I come from the communistic society where they don't believe in God and they mock if you're a Christian and this is kind of you know teachers I was surrounded by and some of my teachers they knew that my parents they were pastors and I remember one time where it got so bad for me that I walked into the class and I overheard accidentally that my teacher was talking to students about me I was so hurt like I could not like, okay, wh what else? And I was a teenager in high school and that hurts. So I started kind of going down and down the hill from there. I started, I connected myself to the wrong crowd, started to party, all kinds of stuff that comes with it. And that emptiness was becoming deeper and deeper and deeper in my soul. And I remember uh, the day before we moved to the United States with my uh, family. I'm standing in church. It was Sunday, our last Sunday at the church. I'm standing there and I am trying to like see and I'm talking to God in my head and I'm saying, God, why are they singing? Why are they praying? Like, I don't get anything out of it. Like, I don't understand. I know you exist somewhere over there. Like, I believe in you. I. I'm not saying like God is not real or anything of that sort, but I just don't understand why. And something miraculous happened to me. I felt like a wave crash over me. The presence of the Holy Spirit came up on me so strongly. I had this strange feeling that it, it was almost as though I was put underwater. You know, the sound becomes weird when you're kind of like go underwater and that's how I felt like all the noise kind of became the singing everything became far away from me and it was me and God and he starts speaking to me he's telling me Lana I am real just that one phrase but because of his presence that moment he didn't need to tell me that he was there with me and in that moment, I'm standing, I remember myself standing there and I'm like, oh my God, you're real. Oh my God, you're real. I'm like freaking out inside. And that was the first time I experienced the reality of God. And I know some of you here, women, you might find yourself in a similar position. Like, you know about God, you've heard so much, but you just never experienced Him. You never experience the reality of his presence and I believe that tonight is your night we're gonna pray that the presence of God will encounter you tonight and you will not go back home dry thinking what a waste but you will go back home and say wow God is real and I just speak that over you in Jesus name 
when we moved to the to the United States, uh, first month into it, um, we found an amazing church, uh, Generation for Truth. It's in Vancouver, where, where I actually got saved and then planted. So I come to church, uh, G4T. I didn't speak English yet. I was like using a translation. And um, Pastor Slavic is speaking, and I'm being being like convicted by the Holy Spirit this conviction came over me I couldn't stand on my feet so I dropped myself to the knees and I start bawling my eyes out God started touching me but not only to show me that he is real at that moment he was asking something of me he was asking of my surrender because when I experienced his presence I did not necessarily surrendered my life to him and at that moment my sister is standing here my brother is standing here and I can't stop bawling because of the conviction of the Holy Spirit that is just pouring out of me I'm on my knees and I'm just surrendering my life to God and I'm promising him things and I'm like yes God you got me I'm gonna follow you for the rest of my life you have my heart you have my time you have my everything and this was the moment where I got saved when I surrendered completely my life to God and some of you on this place I know that you have experienced the presence of God in your life you know he's real you know the reality of the Holy Spirit but yet you have not surrendered your life to God yet and tonight I challenge you to surrender your life to God because this life means nothing without God means nothing apostle paul says that i consider everything as garbage compared to the knowledge of jesus christ and i just pray that these words will just hit you strong and the holy spirit will speak to you that tonight you have to surrender your life to him not only try to always come and experience his presence he's calling you to surrender your life to him in Jesus name and I believe that will happen tonight I'm gonna fast forward in 2010 that is five years into our family being in in, in the United States I got married I met Vlad we actually met on Facebook <laughs> imagine that he likes to say that you can use a mouse to find a spouse. <laughs> a bit lame, but whatever. <laughs> so yeah, we use the mouse to find a spouse. <laughs> so we met on Facebook. Um, we got married. And I had to move here because he had ministry going on. I didn't have much going on because I wasn't really established uh, there in Vancouver. And... Um, I moved here and something um, bad and strange starting to happen with me that I have never experienced before. So new city, new church, no family, no friends, brand new marriage. And I am getting, trying to fit in and trying to get used to all of those things at once. It was so difficult for me that it pushed me to this darkness. And I believe I also carried some generational curses that had to be broken off of me that I never had to deal with. And I started to deal with all of that. And I felt such a darkness. I felt into the depression. The devil put his grip on me, on my soul. I didn't want to do anything with church anymore. And it was very difficult when your husband is a pastor and his wife is struggling like that you know that's that's pretty bad <laughs> sometimes I would come to church and just like stand at the prayer and I wouldn't be able to open my mouth to pray because I would feel such a like darkness almost like demons seating on me that's kind of a darkness and heaviness I would experience but at that time I didn't know that it was demonic I did not know and then I started to experience severe nightmares where uh, to the point that 
I would scream in my night at my night when I was sleeping and my husband would have to wake me up because I was screaming from terror and that continues uh, maybe a few times a week those torments paralysis and the devil was taking me lower and lower and lower where I was so close of giving up I, I was so close that I almost like I already told him, you know what, I'm ready to pack my bags and go home. It's, it became really difficult. But we started to um, search for the solution. And we started to listen to, um, to the preachings about curses, demons, because at that time, our church was very, very small and tiny, unlike right now. And we weren't necessarily aware of the spiritual realm too much we were learning and I started to realize through the sermons of particular men of God that what I'm dealing with is not just me but it's the devil that is attacking me and I want to read John 10:10. 10, 10. the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That's the words of Jesus Christ. So what I was, what I was experiencing is the thief, the devil, that was stealing my happiness, stealing my relationship with God, stealing my joy that belongs to me as a child of God, stealing all of those things. And guess what? What is the most successful thief? Is the one that stays anonymous. Am I pronouncing that correct? Anonymous, right? So his job is to make sure he's not cut. If he's cut, okay, he's not so good anymore, <laughs> right? And so we started to catch the thief through the sermons. And what Holy Spirit started to do with me is he started to open my eyes to the spiritual realm because what, what he was doing to me the devil will tell me you're such a bad person you're so horrible look at you you hate people I literally hated people I started to feel the emotions of hatred towards people such deep darkness insecurities curses depression jealousy all of that junk the devil has put on me that wasn't mine but he was whispering into me and saying this is you you're such a bad person and at times I when I did not know I would think that I would think such a horrible things about myself and I would think I'm a such a bad person how can I be like this and I would blame myself and guess what the devil was doing oh yeah she cut my lie and she doesn't even know that it's not her but something miraculous started to happen with me as I was dedicating my hours to hear the Word of God to hear the sermons about the Holy Spirit mainly and the deliverance I started to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit on me physically on my body and I felt like I was an onion and the Holy Spirit was peeling the things off of me peeling one layer another layer to the point where I was able to pray and fight for myself now where before I could not I was so stuck in myself in my emotions in my misery in my depression but when the Holy Spirit comes, He looses you up. You know, there's two ways to deliverance. First one is when someone is praying for you and you receive deliverance. Right? Second one is what Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. What is the truth? The truth is a person and His name is Jesus Christ. Amen? As you get to know that person, as you get to know the truth, 
that's who he is you begin to feel free and he begins to set you free and if you feel like you've gone through deliverance you have not received deliverance yet there is another way he is working with you you just have to be patient he will deliver you he will build you at the same time and that's what happened to me for a couple of years i started to fill my mind with all the sermons and the holy spirit started to liberate me liberate me liberate me when one day i wake up and i remember it like now like it was yesterday i wake up and the holy spirit is telling me not like audibly but i feel this impression in my heart and he's telling me lana you're free now get up and i literally got up from my bed as a free person come on you know when you are free you will know that this is what started to happen right after that is that when i got up that morning i started to have desire to minister to women so i started a life group <laughs> because he will always deliver you for a purpose to serve others because that's what jesus called us to do amen and another thing he set me free from nightmares completely no night paralysis no nightmares the devil has loosened his grip off of my soul I'm gonna share with you um, five lessons I've learned going through that pain and I want you to maybe take some notes or something if you want to <laughs> number one recognize your enemy and face him when the Holy Spirit opened up my eyes and he showed me that what I was experiencing was not me being such a horrible person but it was actually demonic I started to realize oh my gosh you have to separate yourself and that is a very difficult job because we're so used to those negative emotions we're so used to in our mind we go to self-pity we go to all of those things because we're we find almost like this comfort in it but you have to separate yourself from that and almost like face it face the enemy and you know if you need to imagine him in front of you that is not you being a bad person hating on people being jealous of someone all of those negative things being depressed being negative it's not you i want you to be liberated i want you to see and separate yourself from the enemy and face the enemy separate yourself and face the enemy in John no second Timothy I'm sorry no John 10 10 we already read that the thief comes to destroy and that's where we have to recognize the thief it's the demons it's the evil spirit it's the curses it's the devil who is a hater of your soul and Jesus is the lover of your soul and you are a neutral ground but we are in a war zone because we live in a broken world you are neutral the devil is not innocent and God is not at fault I want to tell you that whatever you're going through we're so we're just sometimes it's easy for us to okay we want to leave devil alone but we blame God you know I'm here to tell you it's not God's fault that you're going what you're going through today it's not God's fault but he wants to deliver you today because there is an enemy and we have to see him and face that enemy and not be afraid number two seek Jesus' face more than your freedom because your freedom is a byproduct of being near him so when we are struggling going through things like that 
It's very important. I know it's so easy to get caught up with being so desperate for our deliverance. You know, and it's good because deliverance is for the desperate. But we must not become so desperate that all we want is deliverance and not God. Because when He will deliver us, what's going to happen? We're going to leave Him and live our lives and be worse off than we were before. God wants to deliver you, but we must seek His face. Um, let's see. First Chronicles 16, 11, it says that, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. You know, it's so easy for us to um, get caught up. And we are built in such a way that we hate suffering. We, we hate us humans. We just don't like it. We want to escape it. We want a quick fix. We want somebody to just pray for us one time and just, man of God, deliver me from all my problems. But that's not how the world works. And that's not how God works either. My third point is embrace suffering. Don't try to run from it. Learn from it. It will end. You know, when you're going through tough stuff, it seems like God has forsaken you and it will never end. You know, me going like three, four years through all of that, it seemed like this will never end. And you just want to give up. You just want to give up. Second Timothy 2, 3, it says, Endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, some suffering we have to endure and we have to be patient. Why? Why God wants us to endure certain sufferings is because if He gives us a quick fix, we will not serve Him. We will not be built the way He wants to build us. But He wants to build you into the soldier. You know what soldiers do? They endure suffering during war. Okay? And you are a soldier in the army of Christ. You must endure hardships and suffering like a good soldier of Jesus Christ and not seek a quick fix. Because the devil took so many years to build strongholds in your mind, to tear your life down. Let's not expect God to fix it in one moment. Many times that's not how it works. And we have to be patient with God and not throw in the towel. Amen. Number four, never give up. Never, ever, ever give up. You know, going through all that suffering so many times I felt like, God, I can't handle this anymore. I just want to give up. I just can't. You know what helped me? Something that you're hearing right now. Somebody was preaching and Holy Spirit just dropped something so small in my heart. It wasn't such a powerful sermon or anything. It was the work of the Holy Spirit. Those few words <laughs> from a preacher that said, it takes as much amount of energy to be negative than to try to be positive. And I was like, hmm. And that's such a simple phrase just got into my spirit so deep and Holy Spirit gave me grace not to give up and I believe that the Holy Spirit is leading each person into the point when you make a decision not to give up I remember I was working and uh, I was driving and I was talking to the Holy Spirit and I'm like uh, in pain and I tell him that you know holy spirit i'm not gonna give up even if it will take me all my life to fight for freedom and to fight to be free i will not give up i'm gonna choose this path and i feel like the holy spirit is like that's what i was waiting for that's what i was waiting for You know, 
I chose him not for what he can do for me but for him because I believe that he's a good father regardless of what he can do for me or he might not and to that point but you know even with that decision we have to understand that our father is a good father and he does not like to see his children suffer and he is free he is here to deliver and set free if you have a good father I have a good father my dad is so awesome I just like love and respect him so much he's not perfect but he's awesome and how much of good he has for me I remember how he was telling me that when I was born how much he wanted me <laughs> those those words from, from my dad it's so simple but it meant so much and he said that so long ago and every time I remember and they're like stuck in my mind that he wanted me I have two older brothers <laughs> and when I was born my dad was so happy but it's one thing he's happy he told me that that means the world to me can you imagine how your heavenly father is happy that you are here on earth and he's telling you that he wanted you that he loves you that he embraces you And tonight he will pour out that love on you those of you that come from you know families that you don't have a father and we have a lot of families in our generation they grew up without fathers with rejection God is here tonight to embrace and to tell you that he is your father and you don't need to seek and seek fulfillment of that whole in the things that are not good that will never ever bring fulfillment into your life so never give up ever ever give up even if certain things will not come to pass in your life that you're praying for it's okay he is worth it following Jesus is worth everything everything he's worth of everything that we're afraid to lose follow him for him not for what he can do for you amen let's give a hand to Jesus Christ he is worthy in my last point I'm gonna bring that to the conclusion conclusion Let's go back to um okay let's read this one james 1 dear brothers and sisters when troubles of any kind come your way consider it an opportunity for great joy can you imagine that this verse almost offended me when i was going through tough times like god seriously what are you saying this is nonsense <laughs> okay and we can be we can we can talk to God like you know to a father not with disrespect but we can be open and that's what I was like I was almost offended dear brothers and sisters when troubles of any kind come there's no exclusion unless they are demonic okay 99% of our troubles are demonic FYI okay maybe 95 troubles of any kind come your way consider it as an opportunity for great joy what does that even mean <laughs> this is kind of crazy how can you going through stuff being mindful of that that's when when we read the word of God the Holy Spirit reveals things to us and you know why to consider that as an opportunity for great joy 
is because in this verse I believe that's what it meant for me <laughs> that God will deliver you and you will have joy because if we don't go through stuff if we don't go through hardships through uh, heart crashes through all of that stuff we will not cherish joy we will not know how that feels when I was bound now I am free have you ever been bound by something and the Lord set you free yes how do you feel about that do you feel joyful come on you know when I was going through all those years of darkness and now and now I am delivered and I can enjoy my life guys this is pure joy pure joy not just happiness because things are well with my finances with my marriage no I was bound by demons and he set me free pure joy he brought joy to my life and I speak that over your life and tonight somebody will receive deliverance and be set free do you believe that come on and now my last point Genesis 1 and 2 the first uh, verse that we read the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters the earth was formless and empty you know I'm gonna compare your soul to the earth right now if you feel like this verse right here in Genesis the second verse in the first book of the Bible that you're formless you're empty and deep darkness is covering you and that's how I felt for many years deep darkness inside of my soul is covering me and if you feel like that tonight I'm, I have a good news for you and the Spirit of God was hovering over the Spirit of God is hovering over you right now that's why some of you you feel his presence right now you know that he's touching you right now it's because the Spirit of God is hovering over you the Spirit of God is hovering over your darkness and he's here to form you like he formed the earth remove the darkness and fill the void that you've sensing in your soul and that's what I was experiencing that void the darkness and the hole it felt like bottomless pit I was falling and falling and falling and falling and there was no end to it and it, even my dreams were like that where I was just falling falling into abyss and screaming and screaming literally dreams the devil was tormenting me would you please rise to your feet I'm gonna make a call right now if you feel like this last verse right here described you you're covered with darkness inside and you battling with demonic forces and you already recognize that you're empty and you're void you feel like you have no purpose you feel like you're just existing there's more to life and there's joy in the Lord that you are not experiencing I want you to start making your way to the front in our pastoral team we're gonna minister to you we're gonna pray for deliverance we're gonna minister and I believe the Holy Spirit is gonna touch you tonight I can sense his presence so strongly on this place right now make your way to the front
Jesus, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here in this room today. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the atmosphere that you have cultivated in this place, Lord God. And for every single person who is here, I want you to just kind of form a little bit of a straight line. We're going to take a moment and we're going to begin to declare the promises of God over our lives. As Pastor Lana has preached tonight, if you feel empty, you feel formless and void inside your heart, God wants to take this moment right now to fill you with his promises. He wants to remind you of who you are in Christ Jesus. The word of God says that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. That you are God's chosen creation, his royal priesthood. That God loves you with an everlasting love. That the spirit of God is with you and he wants to indwell in you. He wants to fill you. He wants to fill you with his presence and remind you of his love. Jesus Christ came and paid the price, the ultimate price so that you could be restored back to God Almighty so that you can have that relationship with him so that he can fill the void inside of your heart and if that's you I want you to lift up your hands to heaven and I want you to begin to invite the Holy Spirit say oh Holy Spirit say oh Holy Spirit enter my heart enter my heart fill my void fill my void make me new make me new oh Holy Spirit oh, Holy Spirit take more of me take more Let the Holy Spirit begin to touch you right now in Jesus' name. Open up your lips. Yes, Father God, we invite you in this place. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will touch the hearts of your daughters tonight. Holy Spirit, that you would come and fill every soul that is feeling empty, that is feeling void, that is feeling full of darkness, that your light will come, Lord God. Let your light come in their lives right now in the name of Jesus to expose and expose of darkness in their lives right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We're having our, our pastoral team, our leaders come and pray for you. If you need prayer, if you want to be set free tonight, if you're dealing with any sort of, of fear, if you can, just a little bit, if you're dealing with any sort of fear, any anxiety, any addiction, spirit of rejection, Jesus Christ wants to set you free tonight. Jesus Christ wants to take you into a new future, amen? He wants to rewrite your history so that you could live in the fulfillment of his promise, hallelujah. So continue to remain in an atmosphere of prayer, in an atmosphere of welcoming the Holy Spirit and let him touch you tonight. Let him fill you tonight. Let him renew your heart and renew your spirit tonight. You are loved. You are chosen. You are God's most precious gift that he formed you in your mother's womb. He has a purpose and a plan for you. And God's purpose for you is that you will prosper. Jesus Christ thinks only good thoughts about you. His thoughts are to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and to give you a future. And that is yours in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Just remain in his presence right now. Remain in his presence right now. As we continue to worship, let's begin to declare who I am in Christ. I am blessed. I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are with us here tonight. Yes, Holy Spirit. 